Hello, this is Pastor Eric here in for Kingdom with No Limit TV show. Uh, we are here to talk about the Word of God, but before we ever start, let us pray as usual. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your mighty presence. We thank you for what you're about to do in this place. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the peace and for the, for the availability. This is a wonderful day. This is an awesome day. We can't even complain about your glory and your mercy. We pray that your spirit leads everything. Uh, we pray that your spirit take control. We pray that as we talk, we give taste to someone to live and to worship you and to study you in all aspects. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so this is Kingdom with No Limit. We come in this place to talk about our kingdom, the kingdom of God. And for the last uh, one or two months or so, we've been talking about um, uh, the kingdom, the kingdom of God and the word of God, the utterance of God. We say so many things about the utterance of God, the utterances of God, the word of God in all aspects. Uh, we, we defined it. I mean, it would be interesting if... Um, you know, you guys follow up. Uh, we are on, um, we are on the show every Wednesday uh, and every Sunday, 10:30 uh, p.m. and and it's a blessing. It's a joy for me to be here again, Pastor Eric. We talk about the address of God, the Word of God, which is the most essential thing that we uh, we value, we respect. the The Word of God ought to be valued. That's what we need to talk about today. If there is something we need to talk about today, is that is analyzing, we want to analyze the Word of God. By analyzing the Word of God, we mean by going into the Bible, we mean by going deep into the Scriptures, we mean by going into the Word of God and, 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 and read it and study it and get to understand what it means. And now uh, the reason why we're doing so is so that we uh, should be able to apply it to our own life, right? Uh, because the Word of God is a key. We saw in our previous shows that the Word of God is a, is a person. The Word of God is a person that we can send to Aaron. We also saw that uh, uh, in our previous show that the Word of God is, is, it was uh, required uh, according to the law of Moses in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 12, 6, 18, that uh, they have to put it almost everywhere. Uh, in the in the other 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 band banded on the skin uh, on the on the uh, on the on the leather skin on the on the leather belt around the arm on the forehead I mean on the doorpost everywhere so that everywhere we turn around we see the word of God so the word of God is what helps I was I, I have a little confession to make right I was at uh, at home I believe yesterday. And I've, I've realized that as I just spent, spent quite, quite a bit of time without really meditating my, my Bible. And I felt so awkward, I felt so weird, I felt so empty, you know. So I think I, I opened my Bible and I started reading it and I felt so good. Because as I was saying in our previous show, that just as you can't live without food, physical food, Right? You cannot live 100 days without physical food. Likewise, you cannot live 100 days or maybe even a day without uh, spiritual food. And one of your spiritual food is the Word of God. The Word of God is a spiritual food for your soul. The Word of God is a spiritual food for your spirit and for, your, for, your, for, for, for the renewal of your spirit, for the revival of your spirit. And if you don't eat your spiritual food, guess what? You're going to die spiritually. And he that is dead spiritually is really dead. And he will soon affect your body or maybe your flesh. So yeah, I read my word and, and it's very important. Nowadays we have all this app that send notification every, every single day at a certain time. They send to you a verse that you can read. It also help, it also help. Gotta keep in touch with the word of God. It's constant, it's every day. You have to keep it, it's part of our life, amen? So now we wanna go deeper into the word of God. The Bible says in the book of John chapter one, verse 14, John chapter 1, verse 14, watch this. The Bible says that, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld, to, beheld, to, we, to behold, uh, the past tense of behold is beheld. We beheld means we saw, we observed. His glory, the glory as 
of the only, uh, his glory, the glory as the only uh, begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. If we really focus on the first part of this sentence, the first part of this sentence is, and the word became flesh and dwelled, dwelt among us. You understand? So there is something here that we have to unveil. The word that became flesh. It came from one state to another state. The word of God became flesh. The word of God metamorphosed, metamorphosed to, became, to become flesh. The word of God was transformed and became flesh. The word of God went through a process of transformation and became flesh. What flesh was it? In this scripture, it speaks about Jesus, the spoken word of God, the word of God, Jesus or God, not the word of God, the word of God, the spoken word of God, or God himself being the word or respecting his word, the word in a certain nature, whether a spirit. Now, the fact that the word became flesh means that the word became visible, palpable, touchable. Uh, you can see it and smell it and feel it. Now, become it became something that you can feel, smell, touch. It was not that form. It was not that state. And what state was it? I believe it was in the spiritual state. It was an invisible state. It was actually in the audible, audio, audible state. It was in the invisible realm. Then it was spoken and it became flesh. Oh my God. Now watch this. Now, you need to understand that God's intention was for the world to dwell among us so we can see and observe his glory. The main intention of God is for the word to dwell among us. God's intention is for his word in your life to one day become flesh. That means exist, visual, touchable, uh, smellable, or I should say smellable, uh, 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 having physical experience. So, that's the desire of God. The desire of God, the intention of God is that the word of the word of God dwells among us, okay? So we can see and observe his glory. So God wants to outburst his glory. And one way in which he does it is to make sure that his word is transformed into fleshly manner, bodily manner, bodily form. All right. Now, when the word stays with us long enough, it can become okay. Then you begin to see the more the, the uh, more than everything else in His glory. Okay. Now, watch this. When the word dwells, when the word dwells, that which follows right after is a very manifestation of the glory of God. Now, you need to understand something. The word of God has the faculty, the ability to dwell. It means to dwell means to stay. To dwell means to, to, to make it a, your house. To, to dwell means to, to, to remain. So the word of God, once it develops the faculty, faculty of remaining in a certain environment, in a certain place, in a certain house, in a certain body, in a certain soul, spirit, and flesh, in actually in a certain person, okay? When the word of God stays in a certain body and people, after a long while, it takes flesh. It becomes flesh. In another word, it is manifested. It is manifested he manifests the glory of God. Never forget this. So the word of God has the faculty to dwell because the Bible said the word, the word dwelt among us. So when the word of God dwells, so now watch this. What am I saying? What am I going with this? If you can get the word of God out of the Bible and make this word that you just read dwell within your heart, dwell within you, your house, your family, Long enough, after a moment, this word 
will manifest the glory of God by being flesh. The word flesh doesn't mean to become human. The word flesh can't like mean exist. Okay? Exist and become materialized. Oh my God. So now, you have the word of God. You give it the ability to dwell in you long enough, right? By rehearsing it, rehearsing it, to rehearse all means to confess it, means to repeat it many times. Then after a while, this word will turn onto manifestation and the manifestation of the glory of God. Right. So from this, we understand, we understand that the word has the faculty, like I just said, to dwell. Not come and go. The word of God is not a person that comes and go. If you give it, there, he has the faculty to dwell. When, when, when he talks to us and we hear it, right? When he, talk, when we, when, when he talks to us and we hear it, we see something. When the word of God talks to us, just like I'm talking to you, that is the word of God you are hearing. If he talks to you and you believe it. For example, let me give you a simple example. I was saying earlier, you can read the Bible. The Bible has three Ps. Promises, I said it on the last show. Promises, prophecies, and principle. Let's say you get a promise of the Lord of, uh, in the book of God, Isaiah 45, or Isaiah 39. You get a promise out of it, right? You take that promise, you read it, you memorize it, and you let that thing you memorize dwell in you. Sooner or later, after a certain time, this word is going to manifest the glory of God all around you, my God. So now, I want to encourage you to not only believe in, the, in the, what people say, what, you know, fake friends and fake brothers and fake companions or uh, comrades, what they said, and it never came to pass. The word of God, if you let it stay in you, can transform your character. It can transform your being. See, the word of God is not only to acquire material things. The word of God also transforms us into the glory of God. He actually attracts the glory of God through his means of manifestation. Now, let's go deeper. When we take our Bible in the book of Roman, uh, Revelation chapter 19, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to 15, the Bible says, Now I saw heavens open, okay, and behold... A white horse. Uh, Revelation 19, 11 to 15. Now I saw heaven open, okay? And behold, a white horse. And behold, I saw a white horse. Watch this. And he who sat on it, on him, okay? He who sat on him was called faithful and true. See, the Bible never said he who sat on it. Because at that moment, the horse is not the image of an animal, but the horse is a carrier of a prophecy. The horse takes the character of a person. Anyways, it's another revelation. Now watch this. It says, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. The person that sat on the horse was called faithful and true. And, and in, righteous, in righteousness, he, judge, he judges and makes war. Verse 12. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and, his, and, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Now watch this. The Bible said that he saw a man, and this man, this man name was called faithful and truth. Faithful and truth. Okay. Now the next verse, the Bible says that that's John speaking. There were a name written on him that no one else knew except him himself. That means the person that is riding the horse. That is something strange. In verse eleven, a name is given. But then in verse 12, the name that is given, the Bible says that it's not his name. But there is a name, a name written. And that name, nobody knows that name. But this name, only himself knows it. Now, as we continue reading on verse 14, he's he was clothed with robe dipped in blood. Oh, my God. And his name was called the Word of God. 
Now, in the beginning, they were given two names, uh, faithful and truth, all right? In the second verse, they say that we don't know his name, okay? That the only one person that knows his name is that is himself. Now, on verse 13, the Bible says that his clothes, okay, were with, were, uh, his, his clothes with a robe, he was clothed with a robe, deep in blood, my God, the blood of the lamb, a name that was not revealed, a name that was secret. And the only person that knew the name was the person riding the, the horse. All of the sergeant, when the name was dipped into the blood, when the name was dipped into the blood, his name appeared. The name that nobody else know, that nobody else knows, appeared. I want to tell you something. It is for the will of God to reveal what you don't know, my God. It is for the will of God to reveal what you don't know. And what you don't know is always revealed through the word of God. Now, in the beginning, his name was, was faithful and true. That is to say, the name that is hidden, which is the name of the person riding the horse, is faithful and true in his words. In his word, he is always faithful and truth. And the faithfulness and the truthness of God can never stay hidden. It's always demonstrated. It is always shown. It is always seen. It is always visualized. God doesn't want you to stay ignorant. God doesn't take pleasure in hiding good things from you. When, when his robe were deep into the blood, the power in the blood revealed his name, and his name was the word of God. My God. And verse 15, it says, And, and the armies of heaven, clothed with, linen, uh, with fine linen, with a white and clean, followed him on white horses. My God. Now, out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. You see, there is a relationship between the word of God and the sword. The only one relationship that I know of between the word of God and the sword is the S. Cross the S at the beginning of sword, it becomes word. My God. So the word of God is not where far away from a sword. That's what the Bible teaches. That the word of God is like a double a sword. We're going to talk about this. My God. So now, when the person that sit on the horse reveal his name, uh, the word of God, once he revealed his name, watch this, once he revealed his name, an event, a spiritual, natural event took place. And that natural event was that a sword came out of his mouth. And this word was a double a sword, my God. This word was a double a sword. And now watch this, watch this. It came out of his mouth. Now, I don't know, but imagine if, as, I, as you are watching me on TV, as I'm speaking, my, the tongue of mine, my tongue, right? My physical tongue, not my language, but my physical tongue, turned into a swore. That makes me a very strange creature. But why would, why would the swore come out of the mouth of the person riding the, 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 the horse, the white horse, called the, horse of, the word of God? Why would he, oh my God, why would he, why would he, make a sword come out of his mouth. The Bible says, verse 15, now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule uh, them with a rod of iron. He himself trained the one press of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Why is that? Why is it that the, you got to respect, look, people of God, we got to respect the word of God. The word of God ought, ought to be respected. Why is it that when he speaks, the, the, a, a double-edged sword come out of his mouth? Why? This is kind of strange. Why? 
Can I tell you something? When you are in a war, in a very difficult situation, and God speaks, what comes out of the word of God, even though you hear a sound, when that word comes out, it goes to fight and win before you even start the battle. A sword is for warfare. When you are into Christ, and Christ speaks a word to you, his word that comes, you may hear a sound, but in the realm of the spirit, the sound is like a sword that is traveling at the, at the speed of light or at the speed of sound. Going to the battlefield of your life. Going to the situation of your life. And whatever situation you are facing, that's what is causing war. That's what the Bible teaches that he came to do war. Nobody, the word of God, oh my God, the word of God is so powerful. It is so good and so great that when God speaks, it is a sword that comes out. It is a sword that comes out to make separation between evil and good, to settle your situation. My prayer for you that God speak in your life. I don't care what warfare you're going through. I don't care what situation you're going through. I don't care what mountain you're facing. I don't care what situation that is dipping you into trouble, deep trouble and taking you, taking sleep, uh, uh, sleeping time away from you. I don't know what situation makes you cry all night. Wait till the word of God comes out. When it comes out, you may hear a sound maybe in your dream. You may see the, the Lord God speaking to you in a dream. But in the realm of the spirit, in the kingdom of the enemy, or in the realm of Satan, or in the world of Satan, the word of God comes out like a sword ready to give you vengeance or to, to, to avenge you and to deliver you. That's why the Bible says from his mouth, when he speaks, the one that rides the horse, when he speaks, his, song, he, 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 his tongue is like a double-edged sword. I mean, when he speaks, we should hear sounds. When I'm speaking to you, you should hear, you hear sounds. You hear my voice. But the person that the Bible is speaking about in the vision of John, when he speaks, it's just a sword that comes out. My God, that is powerful. That is powerful. And I want you to repeat after me. Lord, Lord, say a word in my battle. Lord, say a word in my battle. Repeat after me. God, my Father. In every one of my warfare, in every one of my pain and my sufferings, say a word. If you say a word, your word will come out like a double-edged sword. See, in the Bible, God will tell people to go to war. And God will say, go to war and I will deliver your enemy into your hands. Okay, why would you deliver your, my enemy into your hands and then tell me to go to war? In the Old Testament, God will tell Joshua, those enemies you see, I've delivered, you into, uh, I've delivered them into your hand. I will fight for you. You go, but I will fight for you. In another word, as you go, the, the strength you'll be using to fight the battle, your enemy, is not even your own strength. It is the strength given to you by the word of God. When God says, all you need to hear is a word of God. One word of God can change your life for the rest of your life. Matter of fact, it will not only change your life, it will change the life of your generation and the generation up to come. My brother, my sister, the reason why I'm dwelling on this study series is because I want to make you understand. One thing can change your life. It's not a pill. It's not a doctor. It's not a lawyer. But it's the word of God. When God has delivered his word into your life, it comes as a sword. Now, I don't know about you, but a sword can cut very deep and it has a double edge. That means at every direction you swing it, it cut going forward, it cut going backward. I mean, it settled the case. And I bless God because the word of God is truth and is faithful. His name is the word of God. Well, God bless you.
We have expired our time. We'll see you into our next show. But I want you to declare with me, Lord my God, speak a word in my life. Say a word and I'll be free. Just say a single word and I'll be okay. Well, if you want a Bible place to worship, uh, you can meet us on 20, 2815 North 81st Street, Omaha, Nebraska, 68134. Uh, we have Bible study every Wednesday uh, at 7.30. Every Friday, we have prayer, intercession, and deliverance, and healing. And then every Sunday, we have Sunday service where the Word of God is preached. God bless you. Any information, please shoot me an email, and I'll be answering to your email with pleasure. Take care of yourself. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.